everyone and welcome back to another vlog so this week today is monday the 20th of october and i'm just too excited so i need to tell you so today we got our presentation results i was in the middle of placement and i was too excited i couldn't wait till i get home to do a live video so i checked them whilst i was on my placement i was in the car with my mentor and i was like i just need to check to see if we've had any emails to see if the results have come through and she's like yeah yeah go for it and she got really excited and i was there like oh my god please pass because i don't know what i'm gonna do if i don't pass right now and then i opened the thing and i was like i just saw 68 percent out of 100 like, yeah 68 percent oh i will take that i will take anything right now as long as it's not a fail i am happy right now so yeah so i passed passed my presentation 68 percent is a really good um grade i'm happy with that well happy so our next lot of results now are in two weeks and that is our acp assignment dissertation slash not dissertation i'm dreading these results guys these are oh, i'm hoping that i've done enough to pass because when i read it back it just doesn't sound like my best piece of work. I don't, I still don't understand research fully. And I'm just hoping that I've done enough to just get 40% to pass. That's all I need. That's all I want. I'm not bothered about a big grade. I'm not aiming for a first anymore. I think I worked out I needed to get like 77% 70, in this result, this next result to get my first and there's not a chance there's no way i'm going to get that high mark i will probably just scrape past 40 percent. i will probably just scrape past i'll be surprised if i get 50s 60s 70s but you never know i don't know what they're looking for in this i don't know how to write it so what i'm reading and what they're reading might be two completely different things the person marking it might think do you know what actually this is really good i just don't know but I have high hopes that I'm going to pass it at least. I've got hopes that I'm going to pass it. I think I've done enough to pass it, but we'll find out in two weeks time. Oh, just pray for me, guys. Pray for me. So, yeah. So today I was with my mentor, like I said, um, we saw a mixture of patients. We had palliative care. We had a wound dressing. We had, um, oh, I, I saw like a really fungating sort of cancer related wound, really hard to manage. So I had that to deal with today and another palliative care patient today that we had to set up the syringe, syringe driver for. So I helped with that, which was really good practice. Oh, I did a vac. So we had a vac dressing to do on a foot, which is a really awkward place I've discovered for a vac. And then I helped a mentor write out some prescriptions and order some stuff and ring people, do some faxes, all the paperwork side of things as well. So we've had a good day, had a very varied, amazing day and looking forward to tomorrow. It's so nice waking up and looking forward to going to placement. It's absolutely wonderful. It's, oh, I love it. It is the end of the week and I thought I would just do a little catch up vlog with you or just before I go out into placement, I've had my breakfast, I'm sort of ready. I've got my tea ready. So this week I have done all of my normal, usual things that I've been going over in the past vlogs. Yesterday I had a little training session in the morning with an amazing guy who is a community case manager. I've been out with before and I've explained, I think, all of that before. So I won't go into that today. I was about to, but I'm not going to. I've stopped myself from waffling. So yes. Um, so yes, we had a training session yesterday and he taught me all about COPD and he also gave me a couple of leaflets. So COPD leaflet from the British Lung Foundation. Amazing website if you want to look into COPD, what it is, some more information for your own understanding for your patients. Really good website. And he gave me this one. Now, does anybody know what this is? At first, I thought it was bronchitis. And then I looked again, and I was like, it looks like it should say bronchitis, but it doesn't say bronchitis. I'm not going to say what it is because I'm really bad, as some of you know, at pronouncing things. I'll give it a go, actually. Come on. Bronchiac that word anyway so so this is i hadn't heard of this before until he said it and i was like what is that so he was like i'm glad you asked her so basically what it is is with bronchitis you've got a lot of inflammation swelling mucus so the walls of the um, bronchioles in the lungs are all narrowing so there's not enough air getting in and out but with this one, this actually causes the um, 
the airways to widen rather than close in so they're getting too wide there's a lot more mucus being sat there because it can't get it up because they're too wide so then you're more prone to a lot of chest infections a lot of bacteria building up things like that so i found that really interesting i was like well, i've never even heard of this word what why <laughs> so that was really really interesting he also went over how to do a lung examination with me and how to listen for the sounds where to place your stethoscope so that was amazing because that is one thing out of all of this i don't know why i really wanted to learn so he showed me i did see it with him before but he showed me properly and he talked about it a little bit more and what to look out for and things so that was amazing obviously you need to do the extra training or whatever when you're qualified which i'm going to look into doing hopefully that is my aim that is my goal obviously i'm going to find out more about it and if i can actually do things like that i'm getting ahead of myself sorry we've done oh, all of our like palliative patients different types of wounds amputations we've done syringe drivers ivs um diabetic patients We've had really complex wounds, like we've had wounds that are, are caught, like a patient who has got something like lupus, their skin just breaks down. So it's trying to manage those sort of wounds that are really complex and hard to manage. We've had catheters, we've had nephrostomy bags, we've had stoma bags. We've had big abdo wounds that have needed stoma bags on them to fit, to collect all of the um excess gunk that's coming out of the wounds i'm using all of the wrong terminology here i'm so sorry don't listen to me oh another thing when i was with the guy doing the training and um, he grilled me he grilled all of my knowledge he was like okay what's this what's this and then he was like let's go over the anatomical anatomical told you i couldn't speak anatomical terminology so the terms for the body so posterior anterior um, anterior posterior's back don't forget that. Posterior's back, anterior's front, up, down, left, right, whatever. So he was like, okay, what's this side called? So the side of the body. And I was like, I've got this in my book. Can I, look, can I just have a little quick peek? <laughs> He's like, no, we need to guess, Claire, at least. I was like, okay, um, left side of the body. <laughs> Oh, it was awful. And he was like, Claire, what are we going to do with you? He's like, no, it's the lateral. I was like, I knew this. I knew it was the lateral side. I've written this down when talking about wounds on the lateral side. Oh my God. And then he's like, okay. So then he pointed to the outside of his leg on the same side, the outside of the leg. And he was like, so what's this part called? And I was like, bilateral. And he was like, what am I going to do? Seriously? Where have you got that from? I was like, I don't know. It's an educated guess. You said that was lateral. I'm going bilateral. <laughs> oh god it was a laugh it was really really funny i don't know i just go look at my book when i'm writing terminology down i don't i can't do it on the spot or in vlogs and things like that if i'm making notes and writing down or i'm speaking to someone like if i had to go and see a doctor or something to explain something then i would look up the terminology and make sure i've got the correct terminology to say it but in everyday conversation I'm not going to use long-winded words. I'm going to use simple, easy to understand, what my patient can understand and adapt it that way. But I'm, it's not something we're not, I wasn't taught all the terminologies at school, at um, university. I had to look up these terms myself, which is why they're in my book. I will put a picture here. This is my little book of my terminology. And on a last note, I want to tell you that has happened this week. I was on Twitter another reason why you should get on Twitter. I entered this little competition to win a book and I won it. And this is it. So fundamentals of assessment and care planning for nurses. Now I'm not a big book reader with nursing. Sorry, I'm just not. I really struggle with reading and then I had to go back and reread it. And oh. so I have got some books that I have sort of looked at and I have read and I've made notes from and things like that. But I love like the Khan Academy as a lot of you know, I bang on about the Khan Academy. I love it for physiology. Look, all these online websites, YouTube videos, everything to help me understand because that's just the way I learn and that's me. But I've got this book, I've had a quick look through and it's amazing. So um, it's got everything, literally everything in this book. This guy, Ian Pete, you're a legend because this book has everything. So you've got from the beginning, the nature of nursing, the provision of care, how to critically think and decision make, the nursing process, care plannings, different models of nursing. And then it goes into 
skills of assessment and planning care. Then it goes into assessment tools to use. Then it goes into the body system. So how to assess the musculoskeletal system. I can't say it. Um, assessing the circulatory system, assessing the cardiac system, GI, renal, respiratory, male and female reproductive system, nervous system, endocrine, immune system and skin. It's got it all in here. So then if we just go to let me just go to let's say cardiovascular so go to circulatory system so it's got the introduction what the circulatory system does it's got diagrams um and then it goes into the bloods the gases blood groups platelets capillaries blood vessels lymph system and then it comes into this amazing bit where it says health history, physical examination, so teaching you how to do your inspections, check the pulse and things like that. Assessing needs, doing the, those sort of assessments for patient. Cultural considerations as well has been thrown in there, which is amazing. How to measure the jugular venous pressure here measurement of capillary nail refill. Then it goes into oh, then it goes into. Um, it's got this really good pulses table, how to do it and any comments, what you should be looking for when you're doing it. And then it goes into edema, all about arterial and venous insufficiency in the legs, in the arms, anywhere like that. So then it has like a little, like a case study as well, just to show you. And it shows all the examinations and things like that. Oh, it's so good. This book is incredible and it's just going to be so, so useful. It's useful for me. It's going to be useful for you if you're a student nurse. So have a look at it. I'm not too sure on the pricing. That's the only thing. And then, yeah, so it goes on to all. Oh, here we go. The chest examinations. Yes, that's where you should put your stethoscope, guys. I need to draw this out in my book. Yes. And then so... Um, it's got how to do chest examinations. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm, this video is gonna be really too long. But what I'm trying to say, this book is incredible. If you are looking for a book with this sort of thing, this is the one. And I really like it because it's colorful. It's got pictures, I love pictures. It's really simple to understand, really easy. It's broken down really nicely. It's not too um, technical. It's not a lot of jargon and terminology. It's just fantastic. So if you're looking for a really, really good book about care planning assessments of a patient, this is the one. This is fabulous. And on that note, guys, I'm going to leave it here because this video is going to be way too long, as always. Oh my God, I've got three weeks left, guys. Three weeks. Ah, I'm so excited. My, my book is slowly getting signed off as well, which is amazing. I did my halfway interview. Did I tell you that? I can't remember. Oh my God. Okay. Final note. Oh, hate. You're going to hate me. Final note, guys. Um, I did my halfway interview. Got some really, really lovely comments and really good feedback. So I'm just, I'm so happy that I'm on target. I'm doing what I can. Everybody's happy with me. And yeah, it's really, really nice. Oh, thank God. So I'm gonna stop waffling because my tea is probably now cold. Yeah, my tea is a little bit cold. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna finish my tea, finish, get ready for work, do this hair. Oh my God, I'm so sorry that you've had to see this. <laughs> and get to placement, I'm so excited to go placement. And then I've got the weekend off and then I've got three weeks. I've got three weeks left. Oh three weeks oh my god i'm so excited and then that'll be it that'll be a vlog to watch out for i'm probably gonna cry <laughs> it'll be emotional i'm 100 certain of that so yeah so have a great week guys and i shall see you next sunday